On this channel, we like to cover all kinds of cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter vehicles. Obviously, they tend to be electric. This is electric, right, Gav? Kia ora. Um, kia ora, uh, almost. It has a couple of electric motors in it, the powering the window wipers, and the headlight wipers. <laughs> okay, so why is Kiwi EV Gavin Shoebridge driving a Lada Nevia? Okay, well, I just bought this thing yesterday afternoon and I'm gonna be driving this thing from, well, well, from Seattle, Washington, stopping here to annoy you, and then heading all the way home back to Florida so I can convert it to run on batteries. So, that's the plan. <laughs> as right. you do, you know. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I put this hat on as a joke, but it's actually really cool. <laughs> so for those who don't know, Gav, kind of, we've known each other for nearly oh. 14 years now, I Long think, time. Gav. Yep, yep. And Gav was back when he was a young lad. Before I had this. Before he had the grey. <laughs> he converted a Tredia yeah, yeah. to electric yep. and had this little show called Kiwi EV yeah, yeah. on the YouTubes in which you methodically converted your car to electric. It was a, a nine month ordeal uh, to, because I, I, the reason I did it, I saw that movie, Who Killed the Electric Car? Right. In 2006. It just blew my mind to see that, you know, car makers could be making such awesome cars, but unless they were forced to by law, they didn't. And so I thought, well, well I want one. So a few months after watching that movie, I jumped in the garage and readjusted my mask and <laughs> jumped in the garage uh, and thought, well, how hard can it be? So I bought that old Mitsubishi Tredia, that 80s car, took, towed it home and spent nine months removing the gearbox, uh, the motor, the gas tank and putting in electric motor and batteries. And Because this was like, this is 2007 at this stage. There were no uh, real electric cars. The well, Nissan Leaf wasn't on sale yet. You know, I was driving a production okay. electric car around. That, okay, it had that. three <laughs> wheels. It had a maximum top speed of 30 miles per I hour, which is what, 50 k's, something like that? Yeah, about that. I remember that car, I remember the videos very well. <laughs> and I thought, she's crazy, but so am I. Um, and then what I did was um, take a 144 volt system, which was kind of kind of high for the time. Most people are doing like forklift voltage, 48 volts, because I wanted it to, you know, move. Uh, not white zombie sort of move. That's a real, you know, super, <laughs> super electric car. But uh, yeah, so it, this is like 2007. The Leaf wasn't in production yet. The Model S from Tesla was, I think they just called it the White Star at that point. Yeah, the Roadster was, well, even the Roadster wasn't in production in 2007. I think it must have just started about It then, was right? 2008 when it actually rolled off right, the production right, right. line. So like this was, this was no man's land. Right. Like you know exactly what I'm talking about. You've you know, converted plug-in hybrid Prius to be like forcing it to go against its will and And then I forced purely. it to catch fire. Catch fire. Well, hey, it was, <laughs> the heater worked that day. Um, but yeah, so it, it was all freaks and pioneers at that stage. So I thought, yeah, you know, why not? And it ended up getting a cult following on YouTube. And, uh, but ever since then, I've wanted to do another one. I, I, there's a saying, you know the saying, your second conversion is always your best. Right. So I'm taking, hope, hopefully, I'm going to take this home rip the Soviet engine out of it and put in a uh, either a Nissan Leaf drivetrain or maybe a, a Lexus hybrid reprogrammed drivetrain. So that's all undecided. First, I've just got to drive this thing three and a half thousand miles back to Florida. <laughs> what could so go wrong? Between your first conversion and your second conversion, yep. you moved to Slovakia. As you do. You worked for a Slovak radio station that was an English language radio station. Yeah, yeah. And then you had you had a, a, a Peugeot Ion, didn't you? Yeah, uh, yeah a, Peugeot, a Peugeot Ion, which was, you know, as you know, is a, it's a Mitsubishi Imiev with a different badge on it. Uh, and I drove all around Central Europe in that thing, had a whole lot of adventures, made some crazy modifications. You put a kitchen it. in the back? I put a kitchen in the back. I'm still so proud of that. Uh, and this has got a full size, a full size boot, so I can, yeah, make, yeah. I can make a real kitchen on this. Well, it has to be sliding out like the Rivian, or Ooh. I'm not interested. Ooh. Okay, with a little, you know, little uh, legs that fold down and plonk down. Okay, that's really interesting. What I really want to do is put in a uh, inductive cooktop in it somehow, oh, yeah. but that's going to be tricky. So, depending... but you can put solar panels on the roof. Plenty of space there for is, solar it panels. Is, it has flat roof. Yes. <laughs> Duh. Oh, yesterday I was at the at the uh, shop getting some essentials, some tools and stuff, you know, for when it breaks down. And um, a, a young Russian couple walked past, and I heard them speaking Russian, saying "Lada Neva." And I, I made the mistake of saying "Zdravstvo," and then, of course, boom, into Russian they started speaking to me. Like, oh, okay, I've, I've overshot the mark here. 
you know, bit enough more than I can chew. So uh, then I explained, sorry, I only know one word, um, but uh, they, they uh, sat in it, started taking some photos. I took a bit of video of them doing that. Oh, Went to the crazy. gas station. The Ukrainian man said, La Daniva. Yeah. And, uh, and then he started going through, he started translating. <laughs> I recorded him as well. You'll see this in the video coming up, translating some of the documents that came with the car for me. Oh, it's wow. just like already I got on the way here. Beep, 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 guy waving to me yeah, yeah. on the highway. It's like, I don't get that in my 2008 Hyundai. So it's it's really weird because for those of you who know, I've, I've got a love affair for Morris Miners. I've had them, I had them for many years in my younger days. There's a, without giving the, without giving too much away from where I live, because you could probably figure it out based on what I'm just about to say. <laughs> there is a British car specialist in a nearby town that specializes in British cars and they have a couple of Morris Miners out front. Uh-huh. And one is calling to me. Oh, it's not it's going to happen yet. But okay, so for those who don't know, La Danivia. Okay, so why? What is it? Let's go over. It's one of my favorite cars. It's really? in my dream garage. Yeah, I love it. Okay, well where do I start? I'll try and make it the short video friendly version. This is uh, back in the very early 90s, uh, my dad bought one brand new in New Zealand because... The they Soviet sold them Union, in New Zealand. They did. In the, in the late 80s, New Zealand and the Soviet Union had a little weird partnership for a while where New Zealand would send them meat and dairy products and you know, skin and that sort he of stuff. He has some fresh lamb. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and the Soviet Union sent us tractors, vodka and La Denivas in return. <laughs> and so I'm not joking. So there's, there were thousands of these things all over New Zealand. So my dad bought one. It was great. We went off roading because, you know, they are as clumsy as they look. They are very agile off the road. Right. Uh, and then uh, in the 90s, I thought that was a fun car. So I bought one myself in New Zealand. And then it's been years. You know, lived in Slovakia. You're not allowed to convert cars to electric there. Everything, anything fun's illegal. So when I finally came to the USA, I thought, well, hey, we're in the land of the free. Let's go ahead and do it. And you're in Florida, which, and believe Florida. me, is oh, yeah. very much the land of they, the free. They love the off-roaders down there. So I think this is really going to turn some heads. So I thought, yeah, why not? I saw one up in Seattle. I thought about it for three months. I slowly raised the money up. And then on Monday, uh, with hours before Seattle went into lockdown and the DMV would not transfer titles anymore, <laughs> I got in there with, a, with one hour to spare at the DMV to get my transit papers to drive the car to Florida. So... Wow, because oh. otherwise you would have had to have done this on a truck. Yeah, and there's, there's just over a grand to do that. So, well, it's probably cheaper than driving this thing, but, but what about the adventure, you know? Right, well, I mean, I don't know. When we had the, the Honda Insight project car, which was only in Corvallis, which is, what, 100 miles away from here, uh -huh. so 200-mile round trip, I was quoted, like, seven or $800 to go pick that up. What? And I was like, nah, I'm just going to hire a... a, a, a a, a truck and yeah, do it myself. Exactly. Um, let's have a look under the bonnet. With pleasure. So under the bonnet, you're going to find a large rubber round thing, which you don't normally find. The spare tire. <laughs> <laughs> right next to the engine. That is brilliant. It uh, actually, it does keep it warm. <laughs> yeah, it keeps it warm it's... and uh, there's no petrol tank under here. It's not no, like the, the, tank... the, um, the, the Trabant, which had its no, no, petrol no. tank under the... The gas tank is under the rear seats, under the body. Uh, and as you can probably smell, once you fill the car up, you've got about 100 kilometers where it smells strongly of petrol. So right. uh, I was getting a free high. Uh, this car's only done <coughs> about 20,000 miles, believe it or not. And it's like a 1.8 litre... 1.6. Let's 1. Don't 6. get ahead of yourself. 1.6. <laughs> I can't handle that much power. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so interesting story this guy told me about the car. It used to belong to a government official in Ukraine, built in Russia in the Soviet Union exported to Ukraine, given as a gift to a hardworking government official who towed the, towed the line. Uh, but he had a car, or he had a car provided to him, so he didn't need it. So what he did is he just stored this. And oh he stored it, and his son didn't want it. And when the guy that imported it, the guy in Seattle that imported it to the USA, it still had the plastic on the back seats. Wow. So it is, uh, when he told me that, I was thinking, and I'm gonna rip out this <laughs> near new 1982 <laughs> engine and throw it away. Oh God, I won't tell them. <laughs> so what are you going to power it with, Gav? Well, I've got two choices. Either a Nissan Leaf motor, which is going to bolt straight into the existing gearbox, or I'll take a Lexus uh, drivetrain from Lexus. I think it's a LH, uh, uh, no, 450H yeah. hybrid. The rear, then... the rear 
um, drivetrain yes. from those. Yeah. yeah, and then just bolt it straight onto the transfer box. That way I can keep the car as uh, four wheel drive with the high low ratio and everything, uh, but also get rid of a lot of space, make room for batteries and stuff. So that's the plan. Uh, one of those two, I'm going to ask the internet, let them tell me what's, what's best bang for buck, what's simplest. Uh, also, I have to keep in mind something that's not so important right here in uh, Washington, we're not in Washington, in uh, Oregon, but is kind of important in Florida, air conditioning. But this is a Russian car, it has no air conditioning. Correct. Uh, but <laughs> in Florida, unless you want me to arrive in a puddle of kiwi, it's, uh, I'm going to need air conditioning. I've just noticed that the... This jack yep. is brilliant. It is a factory standard jack. Everything and this is so here. you can get out of deep crevices as well as change your tire. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing I absolutely love, and I, this is just going to make me sound weird, but I have to show you the front of the car. These little headlight wipers. I absolutely love them. I Which think... is kind of funny because Volvo did them on their cars right. from like the 1970s onwards. I have to turn them on. <laughs> They're so cool. And, and obviously someone at Larder went, oh, that's a really good idea. Yeah. We should do that. Yep. I love the number plate as well. Made in USSR. So that's the main headlight, Not the working. main windscreen wipers. Here we go. And then... Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. It's not working. <laughs> <clears throat> What am I doing wrong? <laughs> um. Um. Okay, I must be doing something wrong here. There you go. The lights were on. No. But nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. I'm learning. I, I heard, I heard a time. whir, but Let's, there was no. Let me. I'll start the engine. Hey! Oh my, <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I'm they sorry. work. <laughs> let me try that again. Stand clear. Fine, fine. <laughs> All right. So in here, Gav. Yes. You have all of the creature comforts that... Uh, no. That, that <laughs> I've any... got seats, that's about it. You have I haven't seat... got a radio. <laughs> it is so factory standard, it doesn't have a radio or anything. It's got a heater, but it's about as powerful as Bud Light. And, and no catalytic converter by the no, smell of it. No, it is, it is running on, <laughs> on uh, the Red Army right now. <laughs> but it, I mean, these things are, are known for being pretty bulletproof. They are. Other than a bit of rust, they, um, they are pretty sturdy. They should just you know, go and go and go. I've uh, collected heaps of videos of these things off-roading. I've been off-roading them before and they just... They're pretty unbreakable once they're off the road. And um, for those who don't know, talk us through the gear levers. So you've got okay. the standard, or We're, your standard uh, gear select at the, yep. at the front. So obviously, one, two, three, four. It's not really happy doing 55, 60 miles an hour on the highway. Uh, it's doing about, at, at, uh, at 60 miles an hour, it's doing about 4,000 RPM. So it's, uh, it's not having the time of its life. Uh, so it could use a fifth gear. The next gear lever here, we have the high and low ratio to uh, use it for off-roading. And then this next gear lever here is for um, the diff lock to lock the wheels all so you can you know, go off. If you've got one wheel dangling in the air, it's not going to spin by itself. So that's basically it. You've got three gear levers, uh, headlight wipers, and a spare tire next to the engine. What and a heater. And a heater, which... Oh, let me, let me show you how it works. I think... Oh yeah, I think I can feel a gentle breeze. <laughs> got all the power of a baby. <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. So. That... And then in the back, you've got, uh, you've got some, some rather nice rubber. They, f they look like they're stock. They, they are stock. Everything that came with everything, this car. This is really quite a rare vehicle. It, it is. And that's what makes me feel really guilty about 
cutting holes in it. That's why I uh, I didn't tell the seller that, uh, oh yeah, uh, this is a great car. Uh, I'm going to hack it up a bit and put batteries in it. <laughs> so you're going to be able to, how how far down can you make the battery box go? Well, that's a great question. The, the, there's once, a big old diff there. Yeah, once I get rid of the muffler, I should be able to put some there. Uh, I'm going to have to do a bit of a hodgepodge, I think. This is going to keep me going for the next few months. Uh, obviously, I've still got a... I've, I bought the car with my own money, uh, most of which was from ebook sales over the last 10 months or so selling the book I wrote. About uh, the end of the world. About the end of the world, which uh, was fitting after 2020. You know, 2020 was a condiment. It would be that juice that squirts out before the mustard, you know. <laughs> so, uh, next plan is to get it home to Florida, uh, rip all the guts out of it, figure out what drivetrain I'm going to use. Probably easiest to decide once I've actually got the engine out. Right. Uh, and then go to work. Excellent. Well. Thank you for, for doing this video. Um, it is my pleasure. typical Oregonian weather right oh, now. Right. It's chucking it down. I have hit. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Gav, tell everybody where they can, they can see you okay, online, well, social media and all that. Yeah, okay. Kiwi EV Adventures is the name of the YouTube channel, the Facebook page, the Twitter account, the uh, Instagram thing, I should probably get more proficient with that. Uh, yeah, just type in Kiwi E Adventures or go to kiwiev.com. And uh, I'm sure we'll be doing more, more stuff. Oh, absolutely. The last time I saw you was in Bratislava. Yes. So I don't know where we're going to meet again, Gav. It has to be Florida now. It has to, to be Florida. The it has to be Florida. Now. I haven't worn this in two years. <laughs> it, it's, it's, wind, it's so windy right now that uh, my hat's going to blow off. The, the flag, the Cascadia flag that we have over there is, is threatening to take off. Uh, and um, I'm not sure how the, the, the footage from this is going to sound, but I'm sure out. it will be perfect. <laughs> it, it's better than the other day when we had some issues with the radio packs. I'm sure that uh -huh. it is actually now going to work perfectly. Thank you for watching everybody at home. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Give Gav a subscribe as well. Thank you to the people who are passing by on my right. They are our charged up patrons. Thanks also to our $50 and $100 a month patron supporters. You know who you are. I could probably do the list from memory, but then <laughs> I'd be lots of pauses and I'd look a bit stupid. So you know who you are. Thank you very much. Don't forget to check out our swag store as well lots of goodies there and I will be back very soon. As always, keep evolving!